Hello, today we start a new book, Jeremiah, and we are going to do a introduction to the book of Jeremiah commentary. Um, the book preserves an account of the prophetic ministry of Jeremiah, whose personal life and struggles are shown to us in greater depth and detail than those of any other Old Testament prophet. The meaning of his name is uncertain. Um, suggestions include the Lord exalts and the Lord establishes, but a more likely proposal is the Lord throws, either in the sense of hurling the prophet into a hostile world or of throwing down the nations in divine judgment for their sins. Jeremiah's prof prophetic ministry began in 626 BC and ended sometime after 586. His ministry was immediately preceded by that of Zephaniah. Habakkuk was a contempor contemporary, and Obadiah may have been also. Since Ezekiel began his ministry in Babylon in 593, he too was a late contemporary of the great prophet in Jerusalem. How and when Jeremiah died is not known. Jewish tradition, however, asserts that while living in Egypt, he was put to death by being stoned. Um, you can check Hebrews 11.37. Uh, um, excuse me. Background. Jeremiah began prophesying in Judah halfway through the reign of Josiah and continued throughout the reigns of Jehoahaz and Joachim, Jehoshaphat and Zechariah. It was a period of storm and stress when the doom of entire nations, including Judah itself, was being sealed. The smaller states of <coughs> excuse me, Western Asia were often pawns in the power plays of such imperial giants as Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. And the time of Jeremiah's ministry was no exception. Um, Asher Benipal, last of the great Assyrian rulers, died in 627. His, his successors were no match for Nebuchadnezzar, the founder of the Neo Babylonian Empire, who began his rule in 626. And that is the year Jeremiah's called a prophecy. Soon after Assyria's capital city, Nineveh fell under the onslaught of a coalition of Babylonians and Medes in 612. Egypt, no friend of Babylon, marched northward in an attempt to rescue Assyria, which would soon be destroyed. King Josiah of Judah made the mistake of trying to stop the Egyptian advance, and his untimely death near Megiddo in 609 at the hands of Pharaoh Necho II was the sad result. Jeremiah, who had found a kindred spirit in the godly Josiah, and perhaps had proclaimed the messages recorded in his book during the King's Reformation movement, lamenting Josiah's death. Wow. Um, the theological themes and messages um, of this book um, is hinted early in an era of conflict surrounded Jeremiah almost from the beginning. He lashed out against the sins of his countrymen, scoring them severely for their idolatry. Um, and he was referred to frequently as Jeremiah the prophet in the book that bears his name. And elsewhere, Jeremiah was ever conscious of his call from the Lord, which is in the first chapter 1, 5 and 15, 19, to be a prophet. As such, he proclaimed words given him by God and therefore certain of fulfillment. Jeremiah had only contempt for false prophets like Hananiah and Shemaiah. Many of his own predictions were fulfilled in the short term and others were or will yet be fulfilled in the long term. Um, judgment is one of all pervasive themes in Jeremiah's writings, though he was careful to point out that repentance, if sincere, would postpone the otherwise inevitable. His counsel of submission to Babylon and his message of life as usual for the exiles of the early deportations branded him as a traitor in the eyes of many. Actually, of course, his advice not to Rebel against Babylon marked him as a true patriot, a man who loved his own people too much to stand by silently and watch them destroy themselves. By warning them to submit and not rebel, Jeremiah was revealing God's will to them, always the most sensible prospect under any circumstances. For Jeremiah, God was ultimate. The prophet's theology conceived the Lord as the creator of all that exists. You can see that in chapter 10 and 51. As all powerful, 32, 48, 51. As everywhere present, chapter 23. 
Jeremiah ascribed, ascribed the most elevated attributes to the God whom he served, chapter 32, viewing him as the Lord not only of Judah but also of the nations. And that's throughout the book 5, 18, 25, in chapters 46 through 51. At the same time, God is very much concerned about individual people and their accountability to him. Jeremiah's emphasis in this regard is similar to that of Ezekiel. And the two men have become known as the prophets of individual responsibility. The undeniable relationship between sin and its consequences, so visible to Jeremiah as he watched his beloved Judah in her death throes, made him, in the pursuit of his divine vocation, a fiery preacher of righteousness, and his oracles have lost none of their power with the passing of centuries. Amen.